thank you for coming to today's ceremony. We are dedicating a monument that affirms the humanity and dignity of those buried in the two cemeteries surrounding us here. The Spiral Cemetery, which is behind us, and then the Newcastle County Potter's Field, which arcs around the Spiral Cemetery. Among those gathered here are people who have helped give this monument its stature. They participated in the many discussions of its design. They contributed money and helped to raise funds to build the initial monument. They listed names and markers, not marker numbers on find a grave so family and friends could find loved ones who are buried here. They are the builders and the rebuilders. To all of you and to those who helped but could not attend today, we owe a special debt of gratitude and appreciation. We are honored that members of Delaware's legislative and county government have joined us for this occasion. Senator Pinckney and Representative Cook um, and Senator, Senator Lockman and Newcastle County Executive Matt Meyer, who came in by bike, by the way. Reverend Irons, the chaplain of the Delaware Psychiatric Center, will offer the invocation. Thank you so much. Let us pray. To the God of the persons who are buried in this place at this time, we come today to honor those who have come before us. We invoke your spirit right now to be amongst us. We thank you for this opportunity to remember those who, who, who have, have died here at the hospital or have been a part of this place in one way or another. So we thank you for this opportunity to remember them. We ask your blessing upon us as we pray in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Irons. Deva Noonan, who's the Associate Deputy Secretary and Chief Operating Officer for the Department of Health and Social Services, will give the welcome. Good afternoon. I am Deva Noonan, Associate Deputy Cabinet Secretary and Chief Operating Officer of the Department of Health and Social Services, and I welcome you to our Herman Holloway campus. On behalf of Secretary McGarrick, Deputy Secretary Noonan Davis, and the entire DHSS team, we would like to thank the Friends of the Spiral Cemetery, the Creative Vision Factory, and our own facility operations staff for their commitment to restoring the Spiral Cemetery Monument and creating the Newcastle County Potter's Field Monument. In the Spiral Cemetery, many of the individuals buried here were patients at the State Hospital, but those 776 souls here also include three individuals who were veterans, two babies who were stillborn to hospital patients, and three hospital employees who died during an epidemic. That one kind of hits home, doesn't it? So we are here today to honor the 776 souls in the Spiral Cemetery, as well as those individuals buried in the Newcastle Potter's Field. These monuments will provide a name for each gravestone number. It is a profound way to restore the humanity and dignity of each person buried here. To those who may visit, this monument is our lasting commitment that your loved ones will never be forgotten. Finally, let me close with this. As public servants, but more importantly as citizens, it is our responsibility to see that these grounds remain a place of reverence and of honor. With these monuments, I know we will keep that promise. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Dave. Next, uh, Michael Kambach, who's the director of the Creative Vision Factory, will talk about building and rebuilding the monument. I 
have a small passage from a Norman Fisher book that I'm going to read. Um, on Monday, July 12th, uh, that was the day that we were going to work on, on rebuilding the monument. And, and that day, uh, a dear friend and co-worker of mine never showed up to work that day. Kelly, uh, Michael Solomon's daughter Kelly Solomon is here. And um, that day, um, it, it really hit all of us really hard. And you know, sharing these words, these, I, I find solace in these words because coming to this monument, fixing the, the monument that failed, um, it just it filled me up with incredible amount of shame that it did fail. And upon being here this summer, uh, of last summer, uh, demoing the monument, preserving the directory tiles. Um, anyways, Norman writes, mistakes are not tragedies. Without them, there is no growth or no learning. It is precisely our moral mistakes, much more than our moral victories, that deepen our sense of what ethical conduct is. Our mistakes mature us and temper us. They fire us like strong pottery. There's a lesson here about perfection projects and impermanence. It seems fitting to me that this rebuilt monument is being dedicated on the cusp of the Creative Vision Factory's 10 year anniversary. We have witnessed so much pain, suffering, and humiliation throughout these 10 years but so much of that suffering has been balanced by so much joy, connection, and purpose. There's not a soul working on this campus who would not benefit from seeing their work through the lens of a craftsman. We can do better, and we must. But we must, we must be sent, we, but the work must be centered around the suffering individual. To quote my favorite therapist, Vicki Reynolds, it requires that we take positions, defy neutrality, and have the moral courage to face up to some of the consequences of imperfect actions. She goes on, this work is very necessarily an anti-perfection project. This is partially because we have not delivered on a just society and we can't envision justice in any qualifiable way. As activists, when a sheltered person is being harassed by people with power, we do not call for a committee, organize a meeting, and engage in long discussions about what would be an appropriate and perfect action to take. Instead, we respond to the oppression in the moment with action. This requires a tolerance for being imperfect. Later, we reflect on our actions, make necessary repairs, and strategize about what might be more appropriate actions for the future. This approach requires community-wide relationships of enough trust and moral courage to take actions. Kind of like the community-wide relationships that are represented here today. When I look at this crowd, I'm, I'm looking and seeing a network that has supported me through 10 years of some really, really difficult work. But that support as well has lifted us. That support as well has transformed us. Uh, just seeing, uh, you know, my good friend Senator Lockman here, uh, Barry and Ginger, Joe Connor. These are individuals that have have, have you know, know the challenges intimately. Mr. Calistro, you know, see and have seen me over many different challenges, many different traumas, and I thank you. These relationships create a sense of safety, and that's where the trust and courage comes from. When I hear Dr. Reynolds, I can't help but think of the craftsmanship of my fellow peer support workers. We don't have to wonder what the lives were like of our brethren bur buried at these sites. We know the pain and alienation in our bones. It's what gives us the courage to be messy, loud, and impatient, especially in the face of what easily could be redescribed as a monument to the crushing weight of structural violence. Darby Penny, internationally recognized social justice human rights activist died on October 11th. Leah Harris, who's here in attendance today, will be delivering a eulogy at her virtual memorial tomorrow. Darby was a visionary champion for the liberation of people with psychiatric disabilities. She was committed to ensuring that the voices and experiences of those with psychiatric diagnoses were infused into all areas of policy making, program development, and evaluation. Reflecting on the condition of state hospital cemeteries, Darby once commented, 
If people treat a cemetery like trash, it's a good indication of how they feel about the people buried there and who are still receiving services. Looking at this cemetery a decade after the state hospital was sued by the Department of Justice, it looks like our feelings are evolving. I'll close with another passage by Norman Fisher. Sometimes sharing our vows with others helps to strengthen them. Vowing is like walking towards the horizon. You know where you're headed. You can see the destination brightly up ahead. And you keep on going towards it with enthusiasm, even though you never arrive there. As the Talmud says, it is not for you to complete the task, but neither are you to ignore it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being in proximity with our folks, with our people, for showing up. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. The Hope Center contributed to the rebuilding of this monument. To discuss this, we welcome Carrie Casey, Manager of Newcastle County Community Development and Housing. Executive Meyer, if you want to come up with me, we can do this together. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm Carrie Casey. I work for Newcastle County, but um, I'm here to talk about the actual workshops that occurred at the Hope Center. So I know most of you hopefully have heard of the Hope Center. It's the former Sheraton Wilmington South, which is now um, housing folks experiencing homelessness um, in our state. And the tile workshop that occurred uh, with, Hope, with the Hope Center was our first time as a group that we all came together. Um, when we opened the Hope Center in December, we were so worried about COVID-19 that we really were not, we didn't allow anyone to come in and congregate together. We even delivered meals and coffee to people's rooms because we, if you recall last December, the COVID numbers were really high. We were just, we, we had never done this before. There were so many reasons for it. Um, and when Michael reached out to us and said he'd like to do this tile workshop, we thought, you know what, this is exactly what we need. And I have to say, um, not only was it our first experience being together, it was our first experience being together. This created, this workshop that we did, it was over two days. Um, it was for Hope Center guests. That included children. That included an 87-year-old woman named Miss Dallas, who um, absolutely loved doing it. And it also included staff. So how was it that we all sat together around a table and did art together? It was the way that we started to communicate with each other, that we started to connect with each other, um, but we started to make our community as the Hope Center. So I can't even say in words um, how much making art and how much that meant to us. Uh, we were worried, we weren't sure who would show up, but so many people had heard of the uh, Creative Vision Factory. We had a line of people waiting the day of our workshop to come and participate. And it was a really special time. Um, and then to be part of, of, of this sacred space, I, I really don't have words for it. It's so special. And I just, I can't say enough to Michael and Joe and the others at Creative Vision Factory for allowing the Hope Center to be part of this special, wonderful project. It is really amazing. So I'm, I'm, you know, that gives you a, a snapshot of what happened at the workshops. They were way, way special. And then I'm gonna turn it over to the county executive. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, it's great to see everyone today. I, I think if I were going to make a motto for our last year and eight months, it would be every crisis brings opportunity. Every crisis brings opportunity. For me, that's my motto for the last year and eight months. For Michael Kambach and those at the Creative Vision Factory, that's really been their motto for, for 10 plus years. Um, I'm here on behalf, not just of the Hope Center, but 570,000 residents 
of this county that owe a tremendous debt to you, Michael, to Joe, everyone at Creative Vision Factory, and so many of you who are so supportive of what Michael and those on the front lines of the daily crisis that goes on in people's lives, not just through uh, a global pandemic, but everyday uh, life that people encounter. We know that there are those among us here today encountering unsufferable and unimaginable challenges. And thank you to so many of you for being on the front lines, addressing those challenges, partnering, supporting, collaborating, do the doing the tremendously hard work, Michael, to find that funding that sometimes is so hard to find. So I'd like us to give Michael, Joe, the Creative Vision Factory folks, one more round of applause. They not only did this amazing work, they also helped us envision the Hope Center. We did focus groups when we wanted to figure out what to do with this hotel. How do we turn it into a place of dignity for the most vulnerable? We turned to many of you uh, and we turned to Michael and he and his team uh, came through in an extraordinary way and helped create the vision uh, that Kerry has helped execute to make it what it is today. I also wanted to highlight it's not every day that a daughter of a former Newcastle County Councilman shows up in an event like this. Ashley Biden is here today, so thank you, Ashley, for being with us here today. A tremendous leader in her own right, someone of her position, where she is in this country and in this world, could do a lot of things with her life, and every time Ashley makes a decision, it's to support folks like those being served at the Creative Vision Factory. I want to quote with, I want to end with one last quote. Uh, Representative Cook, who's in back, and I were discussing Potter's Field. What exactly is Potter's Field? And I found something that the Friendship House of Wilmington wrote a few years ago. And that is there are three Potter's Fields located in Delaware, one in each county. Um, if no family member comes forth to claim a body after it's passed, the state of Delaware assures that each of its citizens is buried with dignity. While a grave in a potter's field may not seem very special, for those of the Christian faith in particular, it is a burial made sacred by the Lord who shed his blood for us all and was buried himself with as little ceremony as those buried right here. We should be very proud that we honor people and treat them as extraordinary here across our state, not just in their life, but after they have passed. And thank you all of you so much for being a part of this tremendous monument dedication. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Carrie and Matt, for those um, inspiring words. The Honorable Marie Pinckney, Delaware State Senator for the 13th District, will deliver some remarks. Welcome, Senator Pinckney. Good afternoon, everyone. When Carrie was up here just a minute ago, she referenced this as a sacred space. And I wanna honor that. So if you are comfortable, I'm going to invite you all to just take a second, if you're comfortable, to close your eyes and just breathe, just take a breath and, and recognize the, the sanctity of the space that we're in. When I was on my way here, I was thinking about what to say. Um, what to talk about. I, if, if you know me, I don't write for things like this. I try to just kind of speak on what's on my heart. And so usually a word will come to me. And when I was on my way here, the word reconcile is what came to me. And the first time I came here, I actually went to Farnhurst to Potterfield with Faith. And one of the things that she told me that never leaves me is that what we did to Farnhurst. We, we buried people there, but after we buried people there, we constructed a highway over their graves. And 295, that most of us drive over on a regular basis, is built on top of bodies, on top of people who walked here, who lived here, 
who we were responsible for caring for. And so as momentous as this is, I think that this is also an opportunity for us to reconcile with a failure. This is an opportunity for us as citizens and residents of the state of Delaware, of this great nation, to recognize that we have failed many a time along the way. And today, is, is, I, I'm hoping that others feel physically the, the feelings and, the, and the, the energy that I'm feeling because this is monumentous. This is us recognizing that we have failed people who we took responsibility for as a state, people who, whose families trusted us to care for them. And in their death, we have failed them, we had failed them, we made mistakes, but we are a nation that comes back from those mistakes. We are a nation that recognizes that it is never too late to reconcile with the failures that we have made. And so being here today for this dedication and this rededication, I want us to remember that it is never too late for us to reconcile. It is never too late for us to repair. And we should always, always remember our history and the, and the reasons that we came and arrived to where we are in this state and in this nation, because it isn't all pretty. It's not all beautiful. It's not all sugar and spice and everything nice. It is harm, it is failure, but it is reparation and today is reparation. So thank you for the honor of being here. Thank you for the work, Michael, Faith, Hope Center, all of the, the donors who donated time, money, energy. It's beautiful for us to be up here and say words, but you all are really the ones that make this possible and that have made this possible. Thank you all for, for being here and for the work that we're gonna continue to do because we're not finished. There is still much work to do. Barnhurst Pottersfield still has a lot that needs to be done. And so I'm hoping that we will continue this work together as a community to make repair to those that trusted us with their lives and that we still owe much, much debt to. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Pinckney. And we will keep on working. The Honorable Franklin Cook, member of the Delaware House of Representatives for the 16th District will deliver some remarks. Welcome, Representative Cook. Good afternoon. When I think about a potter's field, as a police officer for 30 years, we discovered one right down the street here on Bolden Boulevard. If you go out there, there's a monument sitting there and it's all by himself. And it's been there for years. I never knew that 776 people have been buried in this sacred place. You know, the, they were people. And I know we look at Ancestry.com, but they have a family. And you know who that family is? You all out there, Mike, Faith, that's family. This community is family. They have a family. And when I'm reading, they're talking about dignity. Dignity is so important when it comes to burials, sacred places like this. And we have to keep it up. We don't, can't stop here. There's another Potter's Field. I ride my bike on this Markel Trail, sitting over here behind Baylor, sitting right here. I don't know how many people it is, or females there are, but it's a, it's a potter's field right across here. So we don't stop here. Like Senator Pinckney said, we have to keep on going. This is our family. There's somebody I was reading saying they don't know who they are. Oh yeah, we know who they are. Their families know who they are, saying they don't have nobody. They do have somebody. They have us, and we are family. So I want to thank everybody who's been out here. Michael, tremendous job. I just want to get more servants to do that throughout the whole state. Not only Newcastle County, but Kent County and Sussex County. Very, very important. And that's important to us all. So I thank you for having me here to, to come in here today. This is very, very important. It has woke me up about what goes on down here at the Potter's Field. So I just want to thank everybody who's here today, because you could be doing something else. 
It's a beautiful day. But you're here because they do have a family. Thank you. Before I offer a few closing words, I just want to thank you again for your patience while we work through the uh, the wonders of the PA system. But we got there, and I, I really um, the uh, the uh, facilities people have been wonderful through this whole project, and I really thank them for their their help and assistance. I've been part of this monument's journey since its beginning in 2010. I organized the group of state employees and volunteers who wanted to renovate the Spiral Cemetery to dignify the graves of those buried here. We accomplished that by building a monument to display the marker numbers and names in a tile directory wall. And we did that by engaging peer artists and members of Delaware's recovery community. It was disappointing and disillusioning and discouraging when the monument started to show signs of deterioration. Simple fixes didn't work. We learned that a construction issue affected the entire structure. The monument had to be taken down to the foundation. I wanted to run, disappear, maybe retire to Florida. This monument, now reimagined and rebuilt, is a symbol of resilience. It is a reminder that sometimes things in life don't go as planned, however noble our intentions. When big problems surface, it can be tempting to give up and walk away. But we didn't give up on the monument. We couldn't let people down, those buried here, as well as those who knew, loved, and cared for them. Most important, we didn't give up on each other. We summoned strength and resolve to rebuild. We started with the monument's foundation and decided what matters most. In this case, it is the directory of names. The listing of names and marker numbers affirms the humanity and dignity of each person buried here. The directory for the Spiral Cemetery is complete as those burials ceased in 1983, and that directory is on the opposite side of this monument. The Newcastle County Potter's Field is still active at this site. Burials occur on a regular basis in the whole area surrounding the Spiral Cemetery. When it is closed, the blank tiles that you see on this face of the monument will be replaced with tiles that list the marker number and name of each person buried here. In rebuilding, we paid tribute to the original monument design while creating a new one. And in rebuilding, we have reached out into the community to engage a broader circle of people, the Hope Center, the University of Delaware, Winter Tour. Today, we dedicate this mo monument to a fundamental truth. As Representative Cook said, we are all members of the human family. This is our family. We are all born, walk this earth for some time, and then our, take our place among the stars. We also dedicate this monument to those whose struggles we may not see or may not understand. Cemeteries are not only for the dead to rest in peace. They are also for the living to remember and to reflect. With this marker, we are planting seeds of dignity, compassion, resilience, and connection. We hope these seeds will grow and that their branches and leaves will touch all who visit the sacred ground. So may it be. Thank you and Reverend Irons will now lead us in the closing prayer. to all the dignitaries who showed up today and all those volunteers who have given so much of themselves for this monument. Mother Teresa wrote this, humility is the mother of all virtues. 
purity, charity, and obedience. It is in being humble that our love becomes real, devoted, and ardent. If you are humble, nothing will touch you, neither praise nor disgrace, because you know what you are. If you are blamed, you will not be discouraged. If, you, if they call you a saint, you will not put yourself on a pedestal. And that was by Mother Teresa. Let us pray. Lord God, creator of all, you have made us creatures of this earth, but have also promised us a share in life eternal. According to your promises, may all who have died in peace of, of Christ come with your saints to the joys of your kingdom, where there will be no more sorrow, no more pain, but life everlasting. Amen. The blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you again and go in peace.